First of all, let me, let me say how does every one of us stay relevant. And I think every one of us stay relevant, whether you are doing sales or you are doing an <coughs> office job, you are, uh, you are working in a factory. At the end of the day, it's really about how do we be valuable to other people? Right? What is the value that we are creating, that we are adding? The, and the one big challenge that all of us, you know, the whole world will be facing is first, the big wave of globalization and second, the advances of technology. And where you see this most obviously is the stress that this has created for our neighborhood shops. It used to be, as I just mentioned earlier, you know, you go to a provision shop, a provision shop supplies you with practically everything. But today, so many of our residents, so many of our people would just buy things online. So it's no longer possible to just pretend that you know, nothing will happen and that life will just go on as, as normal. The, I was I've been visiting factories quite a lot. And the other day, I went to a factory where the entire factory was almost uh, run by uh, robots in Singapore. I've been looking at uh, the TV programs about China. So I've been looking at the Chinese factories. I'd be very surprised at how many robots they have. So at first I thought, did they have so many robots? So I checked out the International uh, Federation of Association of Robots or Federation of Robots keeps data on the number of robots each country use, yeah, each country uses. And interestingly, the country with the most human beings is also the country with the most robots. Because China is also facing an aging population. So they are really in a great hurry to make sure that we grow rich before we grow old. And therefore, huge number of robots are now. Now, what does that mean for us? You know, what it means is that if I'm working in a factory, I'm contending not just with workers all over the world, but now with robots all over the world. So what is it that I can do that the robots cannot do? So in the same way, uh, this morning I, I hear that you know, you're all very excited about having a 24-7 uh, PA, right? your app, and uh, the, the, the same, you know, what does that mean? Because as workers, you want to have the best app that you can to help you to be more productive. Right? And uh, the, the people who are doing jobs which can be done by an app are now no longer needed. So does that mean that you have no job? I don't think so. I think it's a question of what is it that we can do uh, that will be special, that cannot be taken over by a machine. So I was reading this thing about will drivers be out of job? And there was a very interesting article that there are drivers and there are drivers. He thinks that school bus driver will not be out of a job. And the reason that this researcher came up with is that the school bus driver is not just driving a bus from point A to point B, but looking after the safety of the kids, uh, making sure that the kids get up safely, be seated properly, and uh, not something that can be easily robotized. You know, the, the, the bus can be driven by a robot with all the sensors and probably more safely but looking after the kids will still be an important part of the job. So jobs will have these features and how we change. So how do we add value as, as uh, in sales? Or say we have to think hard about how do, you, how do we serve our clients better. And I'm very glad that Propnex has done quite so many interesting projects using digitalization, helping your agents to be more productive, having your app, and uh, you know, congratulations on that. Very. Uh, progressive move. Now, the other thing which I, I think all our sales agents can do a lot of is that you ask me about the big picture questions and I thank you for those questions. Now, at the end of the day, uh, as a salesperson, you're also hoping that you help your clients make the right decision and that we all make the right decisions for Singapore. And as I said, if the property value, if there's one group of people who needs to think really long term, it should be our you know, property agents. Because at the end of the day, whether property is valued in Singapore depends on whether they're Singapore, right? If Singapore is taken over, Singapore is uh, destroyed by a bomb, there's no Singapore, there's no property. If the Singapore's economy goes downhill, then land in Singapore has no value. Because what, what economic value is there? 
why do I want to go and build industrial estate or commercial real estate in Singapore or to buy a house in Singapore? Because nobody's going to come and invest in Singapore, and even Singaporeans will run away. So the question is, in a way, will our economy continue to do well? And in turn, will our economy continue to do well depends on whether our society is doing well. One great value of Singapore, and I see that, you know, your estate agent is a very multi-racial, multi-religious uh, set of agents. It's for us to continue to maintain uh, harmony in Singapore. So regardless of race, language or religion that is in our pledge, we got to keep Singapore that way, a harmonious society. You see the huge amount of unhappiness all over the world. Right? Uh, even in France, they were trying so hard to you know, grow the economy and all that. And now you have the yellow vest. Just two days ago, you saw on the net amazing scenes of people looting in Paris, breaking down nice buildings and so on, because they felt that I've been left behind by globalization. So as a big thing about globalization, my life has not improved. And they are taking it on, uh, on uh, various groups of people. They're very tragically in uh, Christchurch, you have this attack on uh, Muslims, which is terrible, you know. And so we stand in solidarity with that. I'm very glad that our religious organization and our uh, Muslim organizations stood up and said, look, this is wrong. You know, this is not what our religion is about. So I think we've got to continue to make sure that as property agents, you, you all know about our ethnic integration policy and quotas and all that. These are important ways for us to maintain how many of race, language, and religion. Now, in the short run, I'm quite sure there will be some people who are you know, inconvenienced and disadvantaged that I cannot sell to anybody I like. But in the long run, by maintaining that, we maintain value of the property. We maintain growth in the economy, we maintain harmony. And so it's not something that we can say, I do X, Y, or Z, but we do it together, have the big picture. And I hope that all of you, uh, with you know the, the huge amount of training that you are doing can help to also help our people understand why we got to look at the big picture even though I'm just looking at buying or selling one property because that one property its value depends on the bigger picture in Singapore.